Good afternoon everyone. Welcome to this webinar. Today we're going to be covering how ISO 27001 can help you comply with DORA. Start by introducing the company, IT Governance, deep experience and a widely recognised with over 20 years experience, 180 employees, uh, clients more than 12,000 clients across five continents. We have consultancy, trainers, and subject matter experts, and we are a comprehensive ISO 27001 product and service offering. As you can see here, it's just some of our accreditations throughout the organization. A little bit more about us as an organization, more than 1,300 projects to help organizations prepare and maintain their ISO 27001 compliance. More than 15,000 training course delegates delivered to. We've issued over 7,000 cyber essential certifications and more than 2,350 customers use our governance risk and compliance software worldwide. Uh, my name is Adam Siemens and I'm your host today. I'm the Information Security Manager for IT Governance, with background in IT information security and systems administration. I specialize in ISO 27001 uh, security policy improvements. I am a CISP holder and SSCP with IC squared. I've completed our PCI DSS lead implementer and I'm certified ISO 22301 PCMS lead implementer. So with me, I have Alan Calder. Good afternoon, Alan. Good afternoon. Alan, could you just give us a little bit of information about your experience and your background, please? Yeah, sure. So I'm the founder of IT Governance. I set the business up about uh, 20 years ago to help organizations tackle ISO 27001. I've written a bunch of books about cybersecurity and around uh, GDPR, the uh, most recent iteration of IT governance, a manager's guide to ISO 27001 is due out in a month or so's time. I finally delivered it to the publisher. Um, uh, it's complete. It's the Open University uh, postgraduate textbook. That's me. Okay, thank you very much, Alan. Next panelist is Andrew Patterson. Hi, Andrew, are you all right? Yep, yeah, afternoon. Could you uh, give us a little bit of a, a background and history, please? Yeah, so um, I'm the head of consultancy for um, IT governance in Europe. And uh, at the moment, one of my areas of, of interest in is DORA. Um, I first started working in the GRC world back in the mid 90s um, in the police uh, in England. And um, I specialize in my areas of interest have always been around risk, business continuity, uh, and those sort of things. I'm a SISM and C-Risk uh, trainer, uh, proved to do that for ISACA. And I work across areas like 27001, um, the, the NIST directive, uh, NIST cybersecurity framework, and all those sort of governance risk type of um, uh, standards that uh, we come across. Thank you very much. Right. And our last panelist, we have Cliff Martin. Hi, Cliff. How are you? Yeah, good afternoon. Thanks, Adam. Give us a little rundown of your background and your expertise, please. Yeah, thanks. Um, so my name as I said, Cliff. Uh, I'm the head of cyber incident response uh, within GRCI Law, which is a, a sister company of ID Governance. Um, I joined the group uh, just over two years ago, um, focusing only on uh, cyber incident response. Um, prior to joining the group, I used to work in the defence industry uh, and also the education uh, sector as well. Um, I've got experience in both IT and OT cybersecurity environments, um, and yeah, that's me. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, guys. Right. So, moving on to our agenda. So we're going to cover a couple of different topics here. Uh, as we said before. Um, DORA's objectives and ISO 27001 and how those can work hand in hand to provide a solution so you can meet your requirements. 
Okay, so we'll start with question one for the day. Uh, can you give us an overview of DORA framework and its primary goals for enhancing digital operational resilience in the finance sector? Uh, we'll start with Andrew. Okay, thank you very much, Adam. Yes, yeah, so in, 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 in a very high level, I mean, it's, we, we're talking about here, as it states, uh, digital operational resilience. And the key thing about this is, first of all, it's a regulation, it's not a directive. It's EU-wide, it covers the uh, 27 member states. And because it's a regulation, it goes straight into national law, doesn't need to go through parliaments, etc., as opposed to a directive. And the key area is it's to give a, um, a common approach, um, I'd say a common set of standards about how financial entities or regulated financial entities deal with digital operational resilience. I think the one of the key parts about it, it is when you talk about resilience. So it's the idea that um, organizations can cope with things when they happen and still deliver the key services that they need to for uh, financial services. Uh, again, it's about that consistent approach. And if you actually look at the regulation, which is which is massive, and if you then look further about it, there is, uh, again, technical standards, which are, again, very large um, documents. But in, in, in its key things, it's they, we talk about five pillars. But actually, really, the key thing is about risk and it's about proportionality. So when looking at those key areas, we are thinking about risk management and we are thinking about um, incident management, digital operational uh, resilience testing, um, Big focus on ICT third parties, uh, because this is where a lot of problems will come from the organisations, how you manage your, your third parties and that. And then there's a, a thing in there called about um, uh, information sharing, and those are the five pillars. These are then uh, enforced um, and regulated by competent authorities in each regula uh, regulatory area, so 27 of the um, in the European Union. And it's all focuses about a, a framework. Okay, so this is where it, it kicks in very heavily into the ISO 27000 world. And it's about accountability and the organisations being able to demonstrate that they are doing what is required to make sure that they can deliver those key services in, 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 in the financial sector. And it builds on things like we've seen over the years, the NIST directive coming in and various other uh, regulatory um, requirements across the European Union. But it's this idea that everybody's basically following the same requirements and they all are going in the same direction. Thank you. Great, thanks, Andrew. Um, our other panellists, was there anything you fancied adding to that? Yeah, the one thing I'd add is, of course, if you are already an ISO 27001 or ISO 22301 company, you're a long way towards being ready to meet DORA's compliance requirements. Because at, at one level, what DORA is putting into law is everything that is uh, 27001 and 22301 best practice. There's some specific items that you've got to address uh, to be compliant, but uh, this is international standards becoming law. It's a good thing to happen after 20 years of ISO 27001. The, the only thing I would add um, is Andrew mentioned it being uh, it's all about risk and I think what's key with this one is it puts a lot of responsibility on the, on the organization to, to, you know, to meet these these requirements or, or to meet these pillars doesn't it and as Alan said it's by having ISO 27001 it puts at least you yeah, most of the way there especially with some of the controls that are required as part of this. No, no, I think I think you're right. They're bringing skin in the game for the, for the people at the end to make sure that, that you're doing it. And then ISO 27001 is a great way of uh, meeting and probably going beyond the requirements of DORA in itself. So uh, let's move on to our, our next question. OK, how does ISO 27001 align and support the compliance requirements of DORA? particularly for organisations within the finance industry. Um, Alan, if you'd like to start us off with this one, please. It's a good segue from my comment on uh, Andrew's 
this one's the last question. So, um, ISO 27001 is a specification for information security. So it sets out a number of things that you have to do. And if you do them, you can get a third party to audit uh, you against that and give you a certificate of compliance, which is more than you can do for DORA at the moment. What 27001 requires you to do is a, a risk assessment. You've got to work out for all of the assets and processes on which the organization depends, what the key risks are. Um, you've got to determine your tolerance for those risks and you've got to put place uh, mitigation controls that can reduce the likelihood and or impact of the risks you've identified. Um, and the controls that you put in are going to encompass people, process, and technology, um, and you're going to need to test them to make sure they work. Uh, all of those are requirements of ISO 27001 and sit within its uh, um, uh, recommended control set, which is uh, another international standard, ISO 27002. Um, ISO 27001 uh, also points you at the need for thinking about incident response and business continuity. Uh, and as I said, because it's a specification, you can get an audit against it. If you implemented and had an ISO 27001 uh, compliance certificate, you would be, I would think, 85% of the way to meeting that part of uh, DORA's requirements. Not so much the uh, business continuity uh, resilience testing components, uh, or the supply chain management components, you'd have some of that, but you'd certainly be uh, a long way towards meeting the requirements of the, uh, the GRC aspects, the uh, risk management, risk management framework uh, aspects of, uh, of DORA. Um, and of course, because you can get a, an ongoing audit, it enables you to go on demonstrating to anybody else in the financial sector who's particularly concerned about um, whether you as a uh, customer as a supplier of theirs meets the requirements, you can go, here's my 27,001 certificates. And DORA very helpfully um, does say that national and European and international standards, wherever they can, uh, should be used as part of your implementation strategy. So uh, a good thing to be doing. Great, great. Uh, Andrew Cliff, anything to add at all with that? Uh, enough for me. I, I agree with Alan on that one. Yeah, nothing from me on that yeah. one. Great. Okay. Let's move on to our next question. Okay. Question three. What are the critical first actions that organizations should undertake to align their information security management system with Dora's expectation? Uh, sounds like a good one for you, Andrew. Are you, are you happy to take this? Yep. Yep. Thanks, Adam. Okay, so I, th I think the first thing that you would do, say that you are the person responsible for your um, ISMS certified against um, uh, ISO 27001, is turn around to your senior management and your sponsor and go, that decision you decided to do three or four years ago where we would go through this program to implement a certified ISO 27001, now you're going to get your return on investment. This is where you're going to get your benefit because simply is, is based on what Alan just said there. You have a structure, okay? You have a management system. And fundamentally, I say 27,001 is about risk. Fundamentally, DOOR is about risk. So you've got two things which are talking about the same, same sort of thing. And you then will maybe have to sit there and go, well, how have we implemented 27,001? What, what, what are we actually covering? What is our scope of our certification, the scope of our system? So that might need to be looked at. But the beauty and the flexibility you get with 27001 is that if you think about it, 27001 tells you where you have to get to, doesn't tell you how to get there. So DORA can be built into that. So if I was coming in and uh, uh, doing an audit um, on, on your 27001 system, I'm looking at do you meet the requirements of 27001 and do you meet the requirements of your system? So you can basically build anything you want into it. So the first things that you need to do is, and this is very important, look at who your sponsor is and who is the organizational owner in the sense the, 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 um, the, 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 on the top of the pyramid. And if they're a senior executive, great. But you need to have a senior executive who has accountability in relation to, relation to DORA. So that's something you might have to change. Um, you need to look at your legal and regulatory requirements and your context of what your ISMS is doing. And does it take into consideration what's happening within DORA? 
um, you then would start looking at your 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 risks. Okay, how do they work? How do they integrate with things? And um, you might have to look at some of the governance framework and the governance working within the ISMS. But as Alan said earlier on, it's you're eighty five percent there. You've got you've done an awful lot of the hard work. There's still going to be quite a lot of work to do, but the key thing is you have a structure and the organization is used to that structure. So you're going to get that benefit at that point, but it's like you know where to start and you've got continual improvement. You've got all these different elements, which mean that you've got a got a requirement there and you go, OK, we build it into our 27,001. Might have to change a few things, might have to review a few things based on risk, do something with our controls. But fundamentally, yeah, you're a long way down the journey compared to somebody who hasn't done it. Okay. Thank you. It's really positive for organisations with 27,001 already. So uh, it's good to see that it builds on that standard. Does anyone else have anything to add? The only, the only thing I would probably add to, to that, as I completely agree with Andrew, is you know, as part of having an information security management system, you need to be on top of these sort of these requirements that your organization may have it's not a do it once and forget about it it's you're constantly reviewing it constantly updating it make sure that your information security management system is is still on um, remains fit for purpose depending on whatever the, the security landscape looks like so dora is just one of those steps that organizations need to consider and, and ensuring that the documentation remains fit for purpose I think I think that's right. Um, I think that the, the two things that I would add are, um, while we say ISO 27000 gets you an awful long way towards being DORA compliant, and that's true, um, you still need to understand what DORA compliance requires. You need to go and do some training. Uh, um, you need to do some, some courses that give you the skills and knowledge you need to implement and manage DORA inside your organization. And you need to understand that DORA is just one of a number of cybersecurity and privacy regulations that work together. So you've got GDPR compliance in any case across uh, all 27 member states. You've got um, uh, in some areas the Network and Information Security Directive. You've got AI legislation. You've got a whole host of regulations and you actually have to pull them all together into an integrated management system framework that enables you to manage them in a joined up way. And ISO 27001 helps you do that, but, but you have to go a lot further. And we'll, we'll talk uh, later on about training and about platforms, but, but you need to think of DORA in that broader, uh, in that broader sense. It's really insightful. So, next question. Okay, um, building on that, um, how can organizations leverage uh, their existing ISO 27001 uh, to access their readiness for DORA um, from compliance and identify any significant gaps in their current systems? Um, Alan, anything to add on that one? So, so if you already have an ISO 27001 management system, then uh, what you're really looking for is the gaps between what you've put in place uh, to meet 27,001 requirements and what DORA is looking for. And the gaps are likely to be in, uh, in details rather than in major areas of implementation. Um, so, so you're going to start that doing the time audit thing that you do from a, a 27,001 point of view, which is an audit or a gap analysis. Um, you, you want to do an audit of your ISO 27,001 management system against the requirements of DORA as distinct from the requirements of 27,001. And that'll flush out a number of uh, detailed areas in which you need to uh, make changes, improvements, amendments, uh, whatever, to bring yourself into line with uh, DORA. But the underlying framework, the logic of a risk assessment, a statement of applicability, a risk treatment plan, uh, roles and responsibilities, uh, monitoring, uh, making sure the controls that you've selected are effective in reducing likelihood and or impact. All of those things are already there. The, the, the reality that uh, individuals need particular skills and competences that everybody inside the organization will need staff awareness training all of those things you already know about you're already doing them dora simply asks you to extend what you're doing to make sure that you're doing that in a way that meets dora's requirements the uh, the thing that dora 
requires you to go further than what ISA 27000 focuses on is, of course, the extent of resilience testing, the extent to which you embed how you manage cyber incidents, the way in which those escalate into a business continuity plan, the way in which your cyber business continuity plan should be part of the broader enterprise business continuity plan. All of those go further than what ISO 27001 is requiring. But ISO 27001, if you have it, is a terrific starting point. If you don't have it, well, um, I would still advise doing a, a gap analysis to kick off your project uh, against an enhanced version of 27001 because uh, it's a relatively straightforward uh, approach rather than trying to do it against the detailed requirements of, uh, of DORA. Um, 27001 with frills uh, gets you the information you need to have about what do you have to do to get yourself compliant. Okay. Anyone else, anything to add on to that? I don't think there's anything we can add to that one. Yeah, that's so pretty good, pretty good advice. Thank you, Alan. Yeah. Okay, um, so question five. Could you highlight specific controls or sections of ISO 27001 that are crucial for meeting DORA compliance requirements? Uh, Andrew, have you got any insight for us on this one, please? Yeah, I mean, uh, apart from saying all of them, um, which is, is 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 not far off. Um, thinking about this, so so it's it's twenty seven thousand one gives you as we've talked about that huge amount of um, already the requirements in there. But uh, you think of some other things. So first thing, just don't think about the controls in Annex A. You, you think about the clauses. So we're talking about within the um, the clauses. We're talking about leadership. So leadership. We then talk about, and also you talk about this in the controls, race responsibilities. So who's responsible, accountable, consulted, um, informed. And accountability and responsibility are very important within DORA. It talks about that in quite a lot of detail in, in, in a few places. So you're thinking about back to having that executive who's the, the accountable um, individual within the organization. Um, when you then sort of look at the, uh, the the broader things, you can you can start talking about, but um, you, 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 you can look at some of the controls in, and we're talking about 2022 version here. So some of the organization controls around responsibilities and segregation of duties. But I, I, was, I was looking at, um, uh, so you have door with the regulation, you then have below this uh, uh, the, the technical standards. Now, where the issues with the technical standards, none of them have actually been signed off by the European Commission at the moment. Some of them are still being consulted and some are still draft. So what they'll finally look like is is quite will be we, we can't 100 percent say. But one of the technical standards on risk has itself 27 articles and you can map every single article in that technical standard to 27,001. So you can either um, uh, uh, map it to a control or you can map it to a clause. So. But if you're saying what is the critical ones, I think that it is it's what's driven by the clauses. So it's leadership, it's about interested parties, it's about the context of the organisation, and it's that risk engine that you get through um, clause six and, and operation in clause eight, which gives you that driving force in there. What it also sort of highlights a bit is that in, as we've already stated, but particularly when you start looking at business continuity, 27,001 has certain things in that, but as they've been changing it since the 2005 version, they're very much, if you're really interested in business continuity, you need to get 22301. Now, as you can do an integrated system, you can build 22301 very, I was going to say easily, it's a bit more than that, there's, 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 there's work in there, but in quite a simple way that they, you can build that into your 27,001 ISMS. And the way I sort of, learned, and it, as we say, it talks about incident management. It also talks in 27,001 disaster recovery through ICT resilience. And really, the DORA is a bit like incident management, business continuity, DR, with the volume term, because the way I, I, I describe it to people. So, but you do actually have that, that structure. But if you bring in the 22301 in there to support what you're doing with 27,001, that will help you bridge the one sort of significant gap within that. So everything there you need is really within 27,001 plus that 22,301 gives you that point where you are in a very good place 
as long as you address the individual requirements within DORA, and there are a lot, but you have that structure and that framework of how you move forward with it. Great. Anyone else, anything to add on that? No, nope. Andrew. Andrew. Okay. <laughs> it's through to our next question. Question six, what are some common challenges organizations face when using ISO 27001 to achieve DORA compliance? And how can these be effectively addressed? Alan, is this one for you perhaps? I think that might be true. Sure, it can be. It can be for me. It can be for Andrew. Whatever you like. You're in charge, Adam. Uh, I'm. I'm happy. Andrew, did you have something that you wanted yeah, to jump? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with that, and then then Alan Alan can give you the correct answer afterwards. So um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, what? Well, right. So the challenges. I, I think. I think the biggest challenge probably is um, because twenty seven thousand one is so flexible, um, and its its strength is in its pragmatism. So. One of the first things you start there thinking about what your interested parties are and what your scope of your ISMS is. So your scope could be quite narrow in your organisation, okay, because of that's what was driven, that's what you needed to do. So the fact that you're talking about operational resilience, about critical systems and critical services within the organisation, you may actually have to expand the scope of your ISMS. So it might be broader than where you are. Um, the, the, the other sort of like with anything when you're doing a management system and doing DORA and it's the standard challenges, management buy-in, okay, leadership, commitment, support. Now, the fact that it's a regulation and if you don't do DORA, you can get a, um, doesn't say the amount you can be fined, but it's a dissuasive and proportional and it can be very, very large for a very big organisation. So that normally gets that that senior level um, the, the interest, and we saw that with, with, with GDPR being a regulation and the, the, the things there. So you've got those where you've got those common challenges of any information security management system. I think some of the other challenges are going to be around um, some of the testing, the operation, operational resilience testing. So at some point you're going to do a bit of threat-led pen testing, which is a step up from what a lot of organisations are doing on pen testing. Although, to be fair, a lot of financial organisations are all doing a higher level of pen testing than, than quite a few other uh, organisations. So I think that's the key things. One other little thing which is a little bit different is when we look at risk in 27001, we talk about CIA and DORA talks about CIAA. Where they talk about authentic, authenticity, put my teeth back in. Um, as a, a requirement on the CIA. So it's it's not a big thing in there, but it's just another thing that you need to do when you're looking at the risk is the, the authenticity is that requirement in that. So it's, it's you know, it, it's it's again, using that structure of your ISMS though, even if it needs to be um, uh, 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 amended or anything, should help you with those challenges. But it's the classic one of that, you know, it's getting that buy-in from the organization so that you can move forward and maybe you have to expand what your ISMS has been up to this point. Uh, and that can that can be sometimes a challenge for an organization. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, I think Any? I think I think I think that's that's completely right. I think the um, the other thing to bear in mind is I mean as Andrew says it is a, a pragmatic and flexible uh, standard. Um, DORA is a law. Uh, so DORA is very precise about a number of things that you've got to do. So um, ISO 27001 might enable you to work out how you want to apply a control in a way that works for your business. There are a number of areas in which DORA won't let you do that. It's very, very precise about exactly what you have to do to be compliant. And so um, you have to, I think, take the mindset into DORA, if you're using ISO 27001, of being prepared to regiment uh, yourself in terms of how you uh, how you apply apply it so that you're actually meeting the specific very precise um, you must be able to demonstrate x y and z requirements that sit inside uh, Dora that, that that I would say is probably the biggest uh, uh, challenge to to deal with and at any sensible uh, um, project team is going to make sure there is somebody who is reviewing the uh, the progress and saying actually what it says here and Dora is this so can we prove that uh, and, and I think if you do that you're going to be fine 
Okay, so there's a level of uh, due care and due diligence that we need to be able to evidence here. Okay, cool. All right, next question. Okay, question seven. How should organizations integrate DORA's operational resilience requirements, especially the cyber incident response element of DORA into their existing ISO 27001 based ISMS? So uh, this sounds like a good one for you, Cliff. Yeah, thank you. I suppose a better answer one question. Um, well, if, if you've got an ISMS, you've already thought about incident response. Uh, it's it's a big part of you know, um, de you know, that detection and then response to you know, a suspected cybersecurity incident. But on with that, you've also got to consider the, the impact of uh, any vulnerabilities or events. DORA goes along the same lines as it'll, it's one of the main pillars is how do you then detect and respond to cybersecurity incidents? And if you already have your IMS, you've already done most of the work. It's just about putting that, that assurance on it to say, this is what we're going to do if we detect a cybersecurity incident. And where DORA is specific is where it comes into like the reporting requirements and also classifying what, what do you mean by a cybersecurity incident? So how does this map? So DORA itself has a number of articles uh, under chapter three of DORA, which talks about incident response and talks about the process, but then also how do you classify a cybersecurity incident? And then once you've classified it, does it need to be reported to an authority? And in terms of DORA itself, it, it talks about reporting major ICT, ICT related incidents. And basically that's an incident that has such a high impact on the organization uh, or the network um, and it, it has such an impact on the financial aspect to the organization that it needs to be reported. Now that's only to, a, a, to an authority. On the other hand, you've also got to have a plan in place that you can then report it to any customer base you know, and being able to do that um, as soon as possible um, to ensure that any of the impacts felt on that cybersecurity incident, you can also provide and share that information with those clients so then they can put adequate controls in place as well. So in terms of an organization that needs to meet DORA and ISMSS, you need to ensure that you, you, you obviously have your plan in place. So in the event of a cybersecurity incident or a suspected cybersecurity incident, this is what we're going to do about it. And this is where the organization may look at the process and the steps to say, right, how are we going to do, you know, identify and analyze? How are we going to contain, eradicate, recover? And then what are we going to do at the end of it? Alongside that is obviously the communication. It's the internal and external communications that need to be considered uh, as part of that. Sitting underneath your plan, you will have a number of playbooks which may look at specific threats that an organization may have. So for example, if your organization you know, is, is suffering a ransomware attack versus a, a denial of service attack where it's just hitting a, a web facing device, you're probably going to respond differently. But you need to have that plan in place at a top level that says, regardless of the incident, this is what we're going to do. And then that needs to be supported by those um, more technical and detailed playbooks to say, this is the systems we're going to look at. This is the steps that we're going to take. Here is how we're going to do the evidence collection, handling analysis. Yeah. Great. Great. Right. There's, a, there's a level of transparency there as well as being prepared as well, which is, is good. It's good. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, think, I think the other thing, it kind of follows on from what I was saying just now, is that uh, DORA is very specific about how you have to handle an incident. Um, it sets out yeah. very specific steps that you have to follow, which includes uh, keeping a record of what you're doing to respond to the incident. Uh, and you have to assume that if it's a major incident, at some point you're going to find yourself facing an investigation. Uh, perhaps a uh, regulatory investigation, a trial. And so proving that you responded to the incident in the way that you were supposed to will be critical. Um, so it's no good coming along afterwards and going, how do we document this and make sure we did what we should have done? Uh, I think it's one of the areas in which uh, sensible organizations from the outset will have some kind of software package that is designed to do exactly what Dora tells them to do in terms of tracking and auditing uh, how they're responding to the incident because that, that means you can focus on the incident rather than worrying about tracking it because you know you've got some software doing all of that uh, that for you. And I think that's going to be a very important part of 
uh, um, gearing up to make sure that uh, you are you're not just doing a good job from an ISO point of view, but you're actually meeting the specific DORA requirements in terms of um, incident response. Yeah, I agree with that completely. Definitely want something in place before the incident happens. So. And incidents yeah. always happen. That's yeah. the one certainty in life. That, death, and taxes. Yeah. <laughs> Very much true. Very much true. Right. Okay, so how can cyber comply help you achieve compliance with dora and iso 27001 so this is a good one that builds on uh, what alan was just saying alan are you okay taking us through this uh, take yourself off mute um, is a good thing. So, CyberCompliant <laughs> is a cloud-based platform. Uh, it is a platform that uh, we've put uh, 18 months worth of uh, 15 years worth of experience in helping organizations manage cybersecurity uh, across a broad range of frameworks onto a single cloud-based uh, platform, which uh, does all of the core things that Dora says and ISO 27001 say you must do. It does a risk assessment. It does it quickly. It does it in about 80% of the time that it will take for you to work out how to do it on a spreadsheet, how to update it, how to manage it. And, you know, one of the things Dora says is um, having built your Dora compliant management system, you have to maintain it. You have to update the risk assessment uh, virtually whenever anything happens. Um, so, you know, having that dependent on somebody who knows how to work a spreadsheet is not the smartest thing to do. Um, so, it does a risk assessment. It gives you a statement of applicability. It gives you a risk treatment plan. It does all that in ways that an ISO 27,000 order just goes, yep, I don't need to check your methodology. I know the methodology is fine. Let me just check the decisions you've made and how those meet the requirements and how you've implemented them. Um, Cyber Comply goes further than that. It gives you a whole set of documents that enables you to pre-populate policies, procedures, tie them into your risk treatment plan. Uh, it enables you to set tasks. So the whole rollout and management of what you're doing can just be done on a kind of uh, fill it in, click and forget because you've sent a task to somebody else inside the organization. So. Um, uh, it, it enables you to do all that, enables you to go, oh, hang on a minute, I need to integrate with GDPR. How do I do that? Look, I can do it because I get with Cyber Comply everything. I get all 30 odd uh, sets of documentation. I get the DPIA tool, the, uh, the data flow mapping tool. I get everything that I might not need, but I'm not paying extra for it when I do need it. So actually what that means is we can build a, a genuinely integrated, automated platform. We had a client who, uh, said to us that using cyber comply just for their ISO 27001 implementation saved them between 40 and 80,000 pounds in terms of the investment they otherwise think they would have had to have made in terms of additional people, time and expertise to implement it. And it got done fast uh, and they enabled them to go to stakeholders and say, look, this is what we've done. So that can be done with Dora. But above all, it can manage incidents. It can track incidents. It can check them back to your risk treatment plan. Um, it can do it can give you your border dashboard, which enables them to track what's going on. So it gives you the the capability of demonstrating that you are genuinely meeting Dora's requirements in a cost effective uh, way that is uh, that's really in line with uh, what Dora is looking for. And that and the next the next slide kind of captures this. Um, the the what you've got sitting in there is not just a few people who've worked out what Dora thinks it might require, but you've got all of the knowledge that has been multiply accredited. We've got we you know we are we've been an ISO 27001 company ourselves for a number of years. We have 27701. Uh, we have ISO 9001. All of those you can also access through uh, the uh, through cyber compliers. Uh, as a, as, a, as a platform, uh, PCI, uh, Swift, all of those. Um, and of course, the training that uh, you might need is integrated. So as with anything that you might get from an IT governance business, everything is designed to fit together so that when you have a consultant in to help you, they'll talk to you about how to do something on cyber comply. Uh, the training course will uh, help you understand how to deploy ISO 27001 in a way that works. Um, everything kind of fits together so that you don't have to spend time trying to make things fit together from multiple uh, vendors. You can 
get the solution you need and focus on your own business. So recognized under multiple frameworks. Um, and of course, uh, we go beyond just simple uh, cyber compliance. I say simple, it's, uh, it's a wonderful platform. Um, as the next slides show you, we have a, a suite of products which are uh, designed to enable you to tackle all of your training requirements. Uh, so IBITGQ is a international certification body for personnel. Um, we, uh, we sell training courses which prepare people for their practitioner training, their foundation training course, their lead auditor training course, their compliance officer training course. We have consultancy offerings around gap analysis. There's a DORA staff awareness training course. This is the first cybersecurity law where, which goes beyond what GDPR says about people must have competence is it actually puts a mandatory requirement in there that everybody uh, has the training they need for the roles they have and that everybody inside the business undergoes staff awareness training, a bit like anti-money laundering, uh, uh, um, know your customer and so on for the uh, financial sector. So a comprehensive suite of products, um, which uh, are not only in terms of training, but as the next slide will uh, show you, covers uh, in more detail uh, the range of ISO 27001 and ISO 22301 courses you can buy the standards. So everything that you might need to tackle uh, tackle DORA compliance, you can get uh, get through us. You knowing that it's embedded in all the other things that you might need, that you're not going to be tackling DORA uh, in isolation in a silo. It's going to be part of a much broader. If that's what you want to do, it can be part of a much broader uh, implementation of something which is a really cost effective way for you to build and manage uh, your DORA compliance program. There you are. Thank you very much, Alan. That's really comprehensively covered there, that we're a one-stop shop for this kind of thing, information security and your compliance needs. Um, if anyone would like to learn a bit more about us as an organisation, um, we've got all the socials. You can go to our website. We have a UK website, itgovernance.co.uk, an EU website, itgovernance.eu, and a US website, itgovernanceusa.com. Uh, you can email us directly if you would like to talk to someone in our sales teams or call us. We're on LinkedIn, we're on Twitter or X, and you can follow us on um, Facebook as well. So, next part, time for a little bit of engagement. So, questions. Uh, hopefully everyone there in the audience sitting patiently, this is your moment. So within the GoToMeeting platform, there should be a section for you to ask questions or submit them. Um, it is time limited, so feel free to uh, pop any questions you can now and we will do our best to try and get through some of these quickly. Um, alternatively, what we'll do is uh, either have someone from our sales team contact you if it's a sales question or have one of our experts reply back via email. But uh, just give everyone a, a moment now so they can quickly pop some questions through and we'll see if we can get some, get some uh, ones for our panelists. Okay, one question we've got here. Uh, how likely do we think that this law will eventually apply fully within the UK? So I guess this is a case of porting over something very similar um, into UK law as much way that the GDPR came over. Anyone, anyone, any thoughts on that? I think the chances of the UK adopting an EU law are approximately zero uh, because it's kind of anathema, uh, you know, uh, all of those things about the Brexit freedoms and so on. Having said that, uh, the Bank of England and the FRC already have in place a set of cyber resilience requirements for financial institutions, which they would claim are equivalent to what Dora is already looking for. However, the issues which will affect, irrespective of what the UK government does, uh, the UK financial sector are one, uh, if you have services being provided into the EU, uh, in which case you will if you're regulated by the EU in respect of that service, you will have to comply with DORA. Two, if you're an ICT service provider and you're providing services from the UK into anywhere in the EU to the financial sector, you will have to comply because ICT service providers are overtly within scope for DORA. Right. Uh, another quick question here. Uh, if we are considered a critical third party 
by a financial organization is having 27001 ISO 27001 certification sufficient uh, to be compliant or do we have to also do a gap analysis between ISO 27001 and DORA? Andrew? Or Alan? Or... Helps if I unmute. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry there. Um, right. You, you get your... ISO 27001, if you haven't taken DORA into consideration, is probably not going to be enough. What the key thing is that it is, it's what the financial uh, um, uh, uh, organization requires you to do. So, again, if you are supporting a critical service that is being provided by the financial institution, they're probably going to have a higher requirement on you from proportion, the proportionality principle. Um, Without seeing what or how detailed your 27,001 certification is, what your scope is, where you're talking about your interested parties, etc., you I can't say yes or no. What I can tell you is you are in a position that you will be able to support the requirements of that financial organisation. You're in a far stronger position. So I'm talking to quite a few organisations at the moment where we, we work with who got 27,001. And we're sitting there going, right, so this is the bit you've got to enhance. Because as Alan said earlier on, 27,000 sort of said, one tells you where you've got to get to, not how to get there. And door is quite specific on what you've got to get to. But it will be enhancing. But again, it's it, it, that's a bit down to the financial institution and ultimately their competence authority as to what you need to do in, in the specifics. I, I, I think that's right. I mean, my, my, my view is if you are quite clearly an ICT, a critical ICT third party service provider, then you're within scope of DORA. I think that's, that, that's how I read that. Um, and ISO 27001 will not be enough. You might be able to negotiate with your customers and you might be able to negotiate with the uh, competent authority and get away with 27001. But my expectation is you fall squarely in scope uh, as a ICT, a third party ICT service provider of a critical service. Okay, brilliant. That's certainly the way I would be planning if I were you. Okay, I'm afraid that we've run out of time for today, but um, as I said before, um, what we'll do is we'll do our best to collect and collate all of those questions that we've got and try and have the, um, either our panelists or one of our other experts come back to you with um, the relevant answer or uh, potentially engage for some more information. Okay, thank you very much for, for attending today. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Take care, Thanks, folks. Goodbye. Have a good day. Bye-bye.